to the Cannons and Tomahawks podcast, presented by Belly Up Sports. All things hockey, all the time. And now, here are your hosts, two washed up beer leaguers who have no idea what they're talking about, Zach Martin and Alex Nuttle. going on everybody we are back with another episode of the Candace and Tom Hawks podcast presented by belly up sports I'm Alex that's Zach Zach how you doing man doing good man you know it's Friday you know another great day to talk hockey um my black hawks have basically made me feel like I just need to start looking at who I need to root for in the playoffs because it's been a it's been a rough go since yeah. last episode but how have you been man oh good a uh, quick comment on the Blackhawks suck it now, so now that I got that out of the way, <laughs> Zach, I think we got a special guest today. Yes, we do, actually. From uh, What a Hockey, you know, one of the guys on that podcast talk about, you know, Dallas Stars and, you know, the minor league system as well. And, you know, really great to have this guy on. And uh, it's and happy to have Fink on. Fink, how are you doing tonight, man? Uh, I'm good. I'm with you guys. It's Friday. We survived. We made it this far. I feel like uh, this is the central. This is the central standings by Discover Card Sadness Trio right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Pretty much. I mean, at least my team's not last. So yeah. yeah. Which, which includes the Red Wings. So I don't feel too bad. <laughs> I was going to say we can all take solace in the fact that we're not Detroit fans um, just for this season because yeah. apparently they're going to just have like a youth movement in the next like two seasons. So they're just going to be unreal. But for and, now, and, yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're also not Blue Jackets fans in last place in the division. Like I said, that also includes the Detroit Red Wings. So, I mean. You were just a typical Chicago fan shitting on whoever's (laughs) in last place, huh? I mean, you know, it's just fun to think that I made that comment like two weeks ago as a joke and it actually happened. So, you're welcome. (laughs) Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate that. (laughs) I, I I will thoroughly go on record thanking you when the blue jackets get the first overall pick or at minimum if we get a top three pick i will go on record saying thank you until then go away all right bye (laughs) (laughs) this has been great guys thanks for having me on (laughs) yeah yeah, sure (laughs) no problem he just comes on for like a 30 second episode it's like all right i guess we're done then cool i can can go smash my whataburgers and uh you know watch them dial stars hockey because of what's not killer (laughs) analytics for that two minute episode all right we are done (laughs) through the roof so fink why don't you tell us a little bit about uh yourself and the what a hockey podcast you guys are having uh yeah for sure um we've been doing our podcast now since about i want to say october or so of last year uh it's myself uh patrick and jason um we're all dallas locals uh i was born and raised in the dallas area and just had a passion for hockey when the stars came to town thanks minnesota i'll always hate you I'm not gonna <laughs> have to back. that's that's really what i want to say to uh minnesota wild fans sorry i saw the jersey it's our team we literally have north stars logos hung in the raptors for retired players like you've got your own team in there. They finally made the playoffs. So you got that going for you, which is nice, but uh, <laughs> love the game. Uh, I always like to tell the story of, of playing street hockey growing up. And my dad is one of those, like we have food at home kind of dads. So I would, uh, I asked him for a hockey net and he built one out of uh, fishing net and PVC pipe with like the blue glue or the purple glue they use for uh, PVC plumbing. And that was the net that I grew up playing on. So uh, the show itself is pretty much, uh, after the namesake, Water uh, Waterburger here in Texas, which I guess we have the connection with Chicago now because some company in Chicago bought like a, a shareholding stock in the and Waterburger. So, yeah. uh, but we we love to talk anything hockey. We've got the Texas Stars from the AHL, obviously the Dallas Stars, the NHL. Um, we have a unique relationship with the Allen Americans, which is the ECHL team down here, which is an affiliate of the Wild, which kind of a weird thing to think about, um, but. <laughs> We just love to talk about anything and all things hockey here in Texas. We we love the fact that uh, people are starting to recognize that there is hockey in the South, uh, even though it does go over 100 degrees. We still somehow, some way, find a way to play and uh, just try to spread the spread the word of the sport. And you know, we we don't dive too deep into analytics and numbers and things like that because we don't want to 
push people away with it because we know a lot of people that are just getting into the sport may not care about how much ice time John Klingberg had against the Columbus Blue Jackets on Tuesdays because he seems he tends to score more on those times. Uh, we just like talk about backstories and we try to peel back the layers and have a couple of players on in the show right now and you know just having a good time doing it and happy to happy to be here and talk with you guys. Yeah, for yeah, sure. For sure man. That's all you can ask for. You know, just as long as you get on, talk hockey, talk what you want to talk about and have some fun. That's that's all that matters at that point. Yeah, for sure. We've had a blast and we've made it some uh, really awesome friends uh, of the show. And like I said, we've we've met some cool people. We've had some awesome opportunities and uh, we're still young. So uh, we're we're happy to uh, happy to jump on things like this and, and talk with people from around the, the country and around the league that do pretty much the same thing that we do. And have been at it for a little bit longer and we're just, we're just pumped uh, to be able to do it and, you know, show people like, Hey, if you want to do something like just set your mind towards it and get it done. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I talk with the North stars to see, you get the North stars uh, logo behind you on your, on your wall and stuff like that too. And also looking at the uh, Jersey collection you got going. I know we talked about it before the show, but that Mr. Alaska Jersey is a pretty nice touch to that collection with Roussel. And I think that's, is that a custom Fink Jersey in the top, that green it's one cus- of the, yeah, we've got a uh, custom stars jersey. My brother, shout out to him. He is a phenomenal Christmas gift giver. So one year he got tickets for us to go to the Stars game on the glass behind the Stars bench. Oh, it ended nice. up being the game that they uh, they clinched the playoff spot against the Flyers. Uh, went on to beat Nashville in the first round. Uh, I think it was in six games. Unbelievable experience. He gets me a personalized jersey. And then if you can see, I've got the Wilkes-Barre uh, Scranton PA uh, minor league jersey that says from Justin, which is an ode to the from Dwight jersey from the office. That was his <laughs> yeah, gift to me. Yeah, that's uh, nice. that's that has a nice touch. Yeah, and it's it's stitched. I mean, it's custom. I mean, it's legit from Dang. the team website. So there you uh, go. big jersey fan. Uh, and then shout out, rest in peace to the San Antonio Rampage. Oh, the yeah. uh, the Golden Knights took them away from us, and they are now the Henderson Silver Knights. Which I love the silver buckets that they rock. But there was a uh, it was a really cool cool thing to see uh hockey in san antonio but yeah big big jersey collector as i see alex's as well yeah so i I have to ask you real quick so your your guys's reverse retros what are your thoughts on those things because we did a jersey um reaction to all the reverse retros and yeah i uh i did kind of put your guys's dead last behind detroit's which was kind of tough to do but sorry about that it's Um, okay (laughs) what are are your thoughts on them at, at the beginning of the season I was kind of on the fence. I'm one of those where like I see a jersey like the same thing with the the blackout jerseys we had there. It's all good and well as a jersey, but show me the full kit. I want to see it from head to toe. So when I saw the the reverse retros, obviously I was a little let down. I think there could have been a lot more work added to it, even just a little bit more green on like the star tracing on the outline on the front and back would have been ideal. Uh that being said, I'm probably going to buy one now. I don't know what it is. Seeing them on the ice after a couple of games and knowing that they're probably not going to come back. Yeah. Um, the Roussel jersey I have behind me is his rookie season jersey. Uh, it was a team issue, so this is like that's the grail for me. But it's also the first white jersey I ever owned, and right. I've been brave enough to wear it to a couple of games this season. So it makes me feel a little bit better about purchasing another white jersey. So that right. being said, I do definitely if i had to scale it from one to ten i'm still like a six and a half like yeah me on the excitement meter um yeah. they could have done so much better though they well, really could have done better right so so what so what so what are your thoughts on the on the highlighter uh, the highlighter black you know green neon jerseys so when they initially released i was over the moon i was like this is sick i cannot wait to see these on the ice uh patrick on the show is a huge fan he's got a uh, blackout hints jersey oh there you go yeah but as time went on this season i don't know they just kind of they didn't really work for me on the ice it's weird when you have a team who literally calls their color victory green and then they make another green color and it's like this your namesake, your namesake is on the back of the neck of the jersey. It, it says victory green on the inside of the collar. And then okay. they made like this this vibrant yeah. highlighter jersey. And I don't know, it's kind of worn on me. And I don't think it's in a good way. So right. 
it's a it's a good ode to the Stanley Cup Finals. You know, you guys have typically victory green. That new one, it's runner up green. So that's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. What are you, what are your thoughts on the Wild taking your guys' North Stars colors and the design of the jersey and making make like their reverse retro? I would love to hear because when they came out with those, I'm like, those are nice. But I want to see what Dallas Stars fans think of these jerseys because the fact that it's kind of like mm-hmm. theirs. But I was I, not get theirs. I was and am still hot about it because of not only is that not their history, because the history, like I was telling Alex before we jumped on, is in our rafters. It's it's up in ours. Like we have the retired numbers, we have the logo. What really set me off was when they put stars on their pants, which don't get me wrong, oh, it's a sick look. Like yeah. the the pants look phenomenal but they literally have the Dallas star star on their uniforms. And so for me, that was like where the line was drawn. Now, if I'm not a hockey fan, if I'm not a stars fan, the uniforms were phenomenal, probably one of the best ones, but because I know the history behind it and because of like my allegiance, it, it, it was a bit of a dagger in the heart, but I will give them that it looks sick. It is absolutely flawless on the ice. Um, I wish the stars were to do something like that with the pants. Um, but obviously now it would be like, Oh, well the wild just did it. So you can't do it. Um, that being said, yeah. it, it's a phenomenal uniform. It, the history yeah. just hurts. Yeah. yeah I was kind of, I'm kind of surprised you guys didn't go with that for the fact that, like you said, it's your history. Why don't you guys do that? Maybe with like, like how the M like how the N was maybe mm-hmm. do like the, like the Dallas D shaped like the north stars and with the star above the d or something like that like yeah i think that would have been phenomenal if you guys did what minnesota did and use the d as like the font like how the, the north stars n was i right. think that would be great in my I, I don't agree i don't see why they couldn't have just used the north stars logo you look at the avalanche they went you with would, the north Deeks. yeah why there not? you go yeah why not and just oh. do, do it just do the n and victor green instead of like the green and, yeah, yellow and then back the, the stars logo and throw it up on the as the shoulder patch and there you go I will say the reason they didn't do that, the president, Tom Gilardi, uh, he basically, when he and his family like took, or I'm sorry, I think he's the owner. I'm sorry, I apologize. The guy who owns the team basically said, I don't want any ties with Minnesota. Like this, we are not the Minnesota North Stars. We are the Dallas Stars. And that's when they went through that rebranding and came out with Victory Green. So that's a big reason why you don't okay. see any remnants of the North Stars in the Dallas Stars uh, franchise whatsoever outside of the retired numbers. Um, and that's why they switched the colors to victory green and they changed their whole, uh, basically front to back, which as you can imagine, set a ton of fans off because everyone just wants this old stars, you know, 99, 2000 Stanley cup jerseys back with the star shape. Those were just absolutely flawless jerseys in my opinion. So yeah, uh, like, I, it didn't make sense why they like those ones, like, you know, the Mike Madonna jerseys and stuff like that, because those were actually really nice because yeah, I mean, yeah, they kind of had that started in Minnesota before they moved to Dallas. But I mean, those mm-hmm. that's what you think of. You think of, you know, Brett Hall against Buffalo. Mm-hmm. Foot in the crease. That's a whole different that we'll probably ask you that later, that whole <laughs> situation with Buffalo. But that's what you think of. That's what you think of the Dallas Stars, not this green that you guys have. Now, I mean, it's nice now, but it's mm-hmm. like when you think of the Dallas Stars, you think of you know the Brett Hall, Mike Madonna, you know, Stanley Cup winning champs of ninety nine jerseys, because that's that's what you think of not right picture green with ben and sagan and you know ben bishop when you guys had him and stuff like that so yeah it's definitely it's weird for sure yeah i agree and and that's uh, that's where they kind of swung and miss on the reverse retros i mean obviously they derived them from that they put 99 on the collar as an ode to the 99 stanley cup champions uh but you know, outside of the star shape on the bottom and obviously the logo being the logo of the stars and 99, uh, you know, you really don't see anything and you see so many other jerseys that did so well um, with their reverse retros and the history behind it. Um, you know, specifically you look at the Kings, you know, deriving it from the Gretzky era and how sick those jerseys were. Um, right. And you just go, you know, Hey, <laughs> you really could have done more, but yeah. I yeah, uh, they, they, they could have gone with the black. They could have gone black instead of the all white. Go with the all black. You've got, you have black jerseys. Just mm-hmm. do another one like that era one. Or if you wanted to do a, a reverse retro, do the Brett Hall style jersey like that. Yeah, I mean, with a little bit of a brighter color palette. But 
Right. Well, and the rumor was they designed these at the same time they designed the Winter Classic jerseys, which the Winter Classic jerseys were phenomenal in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, I think the the you know they derived it from the the Texans uh, from the USHL, and they looked absolutely sick with the big D and the stars through it. <laughs> so I feel like they were just tired. They were like, you know what? We nailed it with this Winter Classic. Let's just throw in the towel on the blackout and the whiteout jerseys. <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah, like, we, we've we've done our job. Yeah. yeah. So before we start moving away from jerseys, we'll just do a quick, quick and easy thing. Best reverse retro, worst reverse retro. Best reverse retro. Uh, I got to go. I, I have an affinity for Calgary. Um, Blasty. I absolutely love that logo. Uh, my closest friend who actually taught me the sport, taught me how to play. Uh, he and I became very close when we were in high school and he played for a team we had here in the Dallas area called the Stampede and they used the Blasty logo. So for me, I kind of look at that and I derive it. I'm like, okay, that's a big reason why I'm so into hockey when I now. Um, worst, I, obviously it's Detroit. It's like, oh, yeah. hey, let's let's take a practice jersey and put some duct tape on the elbows. Boom, reverse retro. <laughs> they could have, I mean, there was endless opportunities for them to do something yeah. really cool, and and they chose to um, not go to work that day. They were like, hey, my toddler like drew lines on the elbows. I think we've got it. Our reverse retro jersey. Yeah. So yeah, the, the biggest thing with Detroit that I I had an issue with is, you know, they had the perfect opportunity to do something crazy you know they're one of the very few teams that don't have really alternate logos they don't wear alternate jerseys or anything at all mm -hmm. and you know granted it's an original 16 but look at the blackhawks for example right. like on zach's hat they have that that different logo rather than the standard logo but mm -hmm. detroit can find something like that Dude, you can even use that stupid octopus as their from their mascot if you really feel like it. Yeah, but, I well, mean, you put you put a cartoon on Anaheim's jersey. Why yeah. not put a cartoon on theirs? Yeah, yeah. Like, if, you, if you look back at the Red Wings when they had the Winter Classic against Toronto at the Big House, they had that funky looking different D that they had back then too. Like you yeah. could just, you could have pulled back and gone with that or something or yeah or like do or do something else with the wheel logo. Like you I've seen a couple of, like mock ups that people did on Twitter. And one of the ones that I saw that I absolutely fell in love with, even though it's not real, is it's it like it's an all black jersey, all black, the red logo, red numbers with like white outline. Same. I mean, it's it is sweet. But of course, it was just uh, some guy was bored on Photoshop or something. But I wish they would have done something like that. You know, it's all red and white. I gr I get it. It's mm -hmm. their team colors. It's the logo. Very traditional, but at the same time, dude, change it up a little bit. Yeah. Like and if I'm Steve Eiserman, you're sitting there thinking, dude, I'm trying to completely turn this entire franchise 180. Why not add New Jersey in? Mm -hmm. Who cares? And it's funny you say that. I it's so funny. Like we look on on Instagram is where I see most of them, but the mock-ups that other people do, and I'm like, there's there's a guy in his basement in the middle of the country that's doing a better job than every single NHL franchise, with the exception of a couple. I'm like, yeah. you guys, he probably would have taken like just a free jersey as payment if you just would have let him do it. Uh, so yeah. it's funny. It's funny to see how many mock-ups from these guys are just like above and beyond better than what the product on ice was. Oh yeah. yeah. It, it almost feels like the like Adidas and, the, and when they work with the teams, it's like it's either lost in translation or it's just like eh, it looks fine. Let's just go with it. And you're like, yeah, yeah. Why? Like there's so many other ones you could have gone with. That's mm -hmm. like there are so many freelancers that you could be like, hey, we're going to hire you. We'll pay you X amount of money and we'll, we'll throw in it. We'll throw in the jersey that you designed for us if you want to do it. And they're like, OK, cool. Dude, if I design one that the Blue Jackets made, I'll take. Tickets to one game, a six pack, and a bag of Cheetos. Yeah, and a, free, and a free jersey, right? <laughs> well, obviously, but yeah, free jersey has to be automatic. Like, I'm gonna get this because I made it. So yeah, yeah, <laughs> so I'm max sweetener to the deal. Like, yeah, just give me a free jersey of what you use, and <laughs> yeah. the rest is just the cherry on top. So yeah, exactly. it's, it's super frustrating seeing all these mock ups that guys make. I mean, even outside of the NHL. You know, with the NBA or the NFL or anything like that, there's so many jerseys that people make. They're sweet, but these mm -hmm. teams are like, um, that's too complicated. We're just going to take our practice jersey and boom, done. Yep. Because why not? Okay, I guess. Yeah. 
it doesn't make any sense. But meanwhile, we're we're sitting here, you know, bank accounts dry, but still going. Hey, I'll throw hundreds of dollars at you if you just give me what we want. Oh yeah, Ex- exactly. Like, like like I'm like I like our reverse retros for the Blackhawks, but I still miss the all black jerseys that we had with the current Indian head on the front of those. I yeah, what year though, I forget what year that was. Uh, I think it was like oh, it was like ten or eleven or something like that. Please bring back the old school all black Hawks jersey with the Indian head on the front. I will pay you money for that jersey because those things were slick. And it's like, nope, you get this like white and black jersey from the from the Winter Classic we had, and then you have the reverse retros, which are nice. But no. yeah, give me the all black Indian head jerseys. I'll throw yeah. money at you to do that for like, sure. Do it. Uh, probably for you too. Probably for the Dallas, like you said. The Mike Badano Brett Hall jerseys. Yep. I will literally throw you money Same. to get those jerseys. I that and I do that. have an affinity for the Mooderus. I know it's 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 a very uh enigmatic logo, but if they threw the Mooderus on with the updated colors, oh, oh man, I, hundreds of dollars drain. <laughs> I I re, oh dude, I remember that because I've seen them like on bar down in a bunch. I think most of it was like bar down and a bunch of other ones too, are like these are the probably the worst alternate logo jerseys mm-hmm. ever created. Because you're just like what in the world? Like, I see what they were trying to do with yeah. the constellation, but oof. <laughs> An absolute yeah. train wreck, too. It was awful, and I love it. It's honestly <laughs> one of my favorite jerseys of all time because so, of how it's, much. Yeah, it's it so just, bad. It's a huge so reaction. Good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's so bad. It's so good. It's like one of those. It's like a movie that's so bad, but you just have to laugh at it. It's kind of like your cult favorite movie. Exactly. Like, guilty, pro, like, guilty pleasure to watch because you know it's just that bad, but you have yep. to watch it because you're like. I just make fun of this movie and I want to watch it. It's what, exactly. what, what the jerseys yeah. are. They are so pretty, bad, but I still much, wear it. <laughs> pretty much any Nick Cage movie now is exactly what those jerseys are. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <Oof. laughs> yeah. Oof, man. Outside of like Gone in 60 Seconds and like maybe it was a couple others that he's had, you're just like, yeah, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Bees. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, oh. the problem is there's so many teams that have really solid designs even if it's just their alternates like probably my i can't decide which one i like better out of the alternates just regular throughout the nhl the hurricanes uh take warning oh, flag yeah, and, yeah then, those and then the kachina like dude you can't go wrong with that those are yeah. so sweet what well, like we talked about before make the kachinas the automatic home and road oh, and, and use the burnt red as the alternate or use their one or their uh, reverse retro now as their alternate jersey mm-hmm. the reverse retro that purple one with the desert on the bottom. It's I don't know how, yeah, especially when they have the moon, like how they have on the on your kachina now that moon they have on the kachinas as the moon above the desert at the bottom. It's just the small details that the at the coyotes did were absolutely perfect. Like yeah. they like the attention to detail is just so legit. Like that's yeah. why I think if you look at it from like home home roads, alternates, reverse retros, name another team besides Arizona and Carolina that that you say is almost better or just as good as those two. I think Carolina and Arizona probably had the best full array of jersey combos in the league. Oh, Toronto, top 100%. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> with, with, kidding. With, with, with their blue numbers on their blue jerseys. with their, just, 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 are so stupid. And they, even slap, though, they slap a gray on it. Yeah. Even though I got my Toronto jersey over there, but still, it's like... Uh, Ew, you got a Toronto jersey? Ew. Told Who you wants that? that? Who wants those? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I know, but it's because of your boy Felino. Yeah, yeah, I have to. I had yeah. to get my Felino yeah. jersey. Man. I love him. I miss him already. Yeah, I uh, I will say this much. I think it's I think Carolina takes the cake just because it's the fact that they took the team that they derived from, which is a completely different color template than anything else they've ever done, and they go, yeah, we'll do it. And they did it before the reverse retro was even. The yeah, yeah, well, yeah. They had the green jerseys. Like, yeah. they, brought, they, they brought the they brought the green jerseys back, which was phenomenal. And they used the brass bonanza in their goal songs when it's Whaler Night. Yeah, and, and then they go with the and the fact that they could have gone with the blue jerseys because they because there used to be a blue Whaler jersey. Yep. But they were like, or they could have gone with the whites. So they're like, no, we're going to change it up. We're going with gray jerseys and keeping the green and all that stuff like that, and keeping the bottom the same. And you're yeah. like. All right, Carolina, we see you. We're, there's I love so it. much I love with Carolina that is done so well from their jersey oh, design. Yeah. Not to mention, by far, in my opinion, the best social media presence without, without, a, doubt. Oh, without a doubt. Like, I'm so glad because we used to, because I, I, 
people have heard me say the story a bunch of times. We used to live in North Carolina, so we would have partial season tickets to the Hurricanes. So, like, that's my dad's team and my second team. And we were even at game six of the cup final at game seven when they won it. So, like, I follow the Hurricanes on social media. Yeah, they're bar none, probably the best social media group on Twitter, just with their interactions in general. And just the yeah. fact that, like, they chirp everyone and anyone. They don't care who it is. They're yeah. like the they're like the Wendy's of the NHL. They'll just they'll, <laughs> yeah. they'll clap back everybody. And they don't care who it is. Exactly. That's just how great it is. I yeah. think that's the, that's the best comparison you could make to it. <laughs> yeah. And I think Carolina would probably agree with you. Like, yeah, pretty much. We're, yeah. Yeah. yeah we're, we're, the, we're the Wendy's of the NHL. Yeah. yeah. They don't care who it is. They'll 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 clap back at anybody. No, for sure. Yeah, well, so I will weird. say I will say one last thing on on jerseys. Uh, it, the minor leagues just do it better. Um, oh, yeah. This is, oh, yeah. We can talk about it until the sun goes down. The, just the theme nights and the amount of theme nights and how outlandish. Uh, I, I definitely oh, bought a Ninja Turtles Allen Americans jersey. Oh uh, man, that's oh, I couldn't. You should, not. Have, you, should, you should have that displayed. That has to be, that has to be so phenomenal. Like it, it's it's insane. It's the Raphael. It's the one that they were wearing because their their team colors are white, blue, and red. So they went with the full on uh, red look for Raphael. And it's oh nice, yeah. Yeah, I've got wait, one of them from the Cleveland Monsters. Those things are sweet, and I got one of the astronaut jerseys they had too. Those are great. Insane. They're so cool. Wait, Fink. So, favorite Ninja Turtle, real quick. Who's your favorite? If you had to pick one, Michelangelo. <laughs> Very quick my, answer, my dude. My yeah, dude. yeah Michelangelo. Michelangelo. My, my, yeah, Mikey's my. Dude. I actually have all the original '90s movies that when they had uh, in the triple pack. Yeah, those are. I think those are by far the best Ninja Turtle movies of all oh, time. Absolutely. You cannot, you can, those in the in the eighties cartoons. Yeah. The, the OG stuff, like you this can't new stuff this. is a monstrosity. It's an, embarrassment. exactly. Oh, especially the yeah. one, like the, the live action Ninja Turtle ones where it's like, you can tell they were really the CGI to the max. So You're bad. like, Nope. Can't. So I'm bad. sorry. They were like bulked out and like, it's just like, nah, this is no, it. no. Yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> Michelangelo all the way though. Yeah, for sure. Alex, uh, so Alex, without leaving you out, who's your Ninja Turtle if you had to pick one? <laughs> Donatello. Oh, the smart yeah. one. That's fair. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a fair one. Yeah, a lot of people will go with Raphael, but yeah, Donatello gets yeah, he's a very underrated turtle that people are like, eh, whatever about. Yeah. But solid sure. choice. It's like <laughs> if someone says Raphael, I'm like, oh, so you have anger management issues. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So we'll go ahead and address the elephant in the room real quick. Are the Dallas Stars going to make the playoffs um it's going to take a miracle uh we were talking about the movie miracle earlier they're going to make a sequel called miracle 2 the dallas stars make the playoffs in 2021 uh yeah after the start you guys had where it's like yeah they're not going to make it same same as nashville they're like oh those guys are dead in the water it's going to be it's going to be columbus or chicago for the four spot and it's like not so fast my friend <laughs> i it's just been it's it's truly being a stars fan in general is one of the most frustrating things in the world uh because they always have the pieces you know you 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 know that they have the guys but no matter what it is there's always something with injuries i mean you look at this season in particular ben bishop tyler sagan out for the season alexander radulov well essentially out for the season sagan i think he might skate one or two games but at that point, I'm like worried it might be too little too late. Um, Radulov, who you had, who was an absolute stud, lightning bolt on the ice. We saw it when he came back from being on the IR. He scored in a shootout, won the game, goes right back on the IR, then gets announced that he's out for the season. Joel Kiviranta, the hero from the, the Colorado series in Game 7, he's been out recently for some time on the IR. He just came back. Uh, so you look at all of that factored in, and... I want to say the fan in me wants to say, yes, they'll make the playoffs. They'll somehow squeeze out a, a game against Florida or Tampa Bay with their remaining schedule. Um, hopefully take, you know, one or two in, uh, in Chicago. I think they play against Nashville tomorrow, which is a huge game for us. So we've got games in hand against Nashville. I think it's going to, if they make the playoffs, it's going to come down to the games in hand. Um now, the realist in me, I don't want them to make the playoffs, to be completely honest with you, because I'm tired of being sad. Uh, I, last season was an absolute pipe dream for us as, as, a, as a fan base, uh, obviously squeezing in. I don't know if you guys saw the record last season, but the Stars had lost six games going into the bubble. 
And then they played yeah. like trash in those warm up games beforehand. I think they beat St. Louis in overtime somehow, but obviously those were just warm up games. So the fact that they ran through um, Calgary, who was hot at the time, Colorado, who arguably everyone thought was going to take home the cup, um, Vegas, who another one who basically has come on the scene and been a nightmare for everyone around the league since they became a team, and then the Tampa Bay Lightning. And so for them to make it all the way to the Stanley Cup was an unreal run. Um, they just, I think they just petered out towards the end. So um, short answer, I, I don't know. It's so tough. This season has been such a weird season to watch. Um, you know, shout out to any fantasy team owners like myself. That's been even more tough because it, yeah. it's you never know who's going to ever play. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm literally right there in the middle. I don't know how it's going to go. Seeing how they played against Tampa last night when they got beat three to zero does not give me a lot of hope going into the weekend. Um, but we've played well against Nashville. We played OK against Chicago. Um, the the Florida and Tampa games remaining on the schedule definitely scare me quite a bit, though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. the biggest thing for you guys is, you know, you have six games left and they're all away. Nothing is right. at home. And then you play Florida and Tampa in three consecutive games. Mm -hmm. Like that's you guys. My opinion from an outside perspective, if you don't win tomorrow against Nashville, I don't think you're going to make it. I don't well, either. Well, the, what's going to help them is the fact that the Blackhawks got Florida for two more games. And then we get Carolina for three, and then we get Dallas. Yeah. So, so Dallas could probably get in thanks to us because after our little jaunt through Florida and through Carolina in Carolina, yeah, this is going to be. I'm not, I'm not looking forward to the last two games of the season because it's gonna, at that point we might be out of it. Mm -hmm. So, well, and the thing too you have to take into account for Dallas, and I hate like I sound like I'm making excuses for the team, but they started a week late and then they missed a week due to ironically enough an ice storm in dallas um yeah i remember the yeah that was it was, it was unbelievable i was actually i kid you not like at a friend's apartment uh in downtown dallas about to walk to the game and like i think eight degree temperatures with a windshield close to negative and Jeez. they canceled the game 30 minutes before puck drop they both it was a uh, nashville was in the stadium so was dallas they were dressed and ready to play and they started turning fans away at the door um but that being said they missed almost three full weeks of hockey. And so not only have they had the injury bug, they're packing games in back to back. Like these road games we're talking about, they're having to play, I think one of them back to back and they're traveling in between. It's insane how much hockey they're packing into this last part of the season. And so, you know, the fact that they're even in the discussion to make the playoffs right now is astonishing to me. So I'll take everything that happens at the end of this 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 run with a grain of salt because knowing that they're playing basically more hockey than they've probably ever played, uh, you know, after the age of fifteen or sixteen, um, yeah. you know, it's amazing that these guys are still standing and breathing because, like, I've skated twice this week and I feel like just a log of crap. I mean, so you know, it, you know, kudos to them and every every team that's had to battle through all of this COVID and. The, the pandemic and then you know games getting switched around it's it's just been insane to watch yeah for sure. yeah going back yeah going back to the fantasy hockey real quick i've had sagan on my ir the whole year because i don't want to give that kid up yeah because he's just so good and i'm just like and i have him jonathan taze and i also have zach Rinsky on the ir and steven stamkos and i'm like i want all i can I have any of these guys back please like yeah because i'm like in the deep of, i'm in the middle of a playoff run right now we're like a week away from our final in our fantasy league. And I'm like, I would love to have one of those guys just come back and be like, Hey, let me score some goals for you. Like at yeah. the last couple of weeks of the season, I'm like, please just, can you just do that for me? That would be so nice. Yeah. But all uh, that it's been, it's been nice. I made a trade that no owner now would ever make. Um, it was, I don't even remember who it was. It was some random kid. And I actually was able to get Jason Robertson. And oh this dude gosh. has been lighting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got I, I got him in that same league that I have Sagan on the IR. I picked up Robertson. He's just been absolutely killing. I'm like, I am keeping this kid yeah, on my same. fantasy team because that dude is like he's like already in the hunt for the Calder. And there yeah, yeah. was like dude, it's, no one, it's no one down to him and Caprizov now. Yeah, no, no one was talking about this kid a month ago. And it was like, no. oh hey, by the way, don't forget, let me just add mine into this uh, conversation. Who's gonna win the Calder? You're like, all right, cool. I think yeah. that would be like the only solace is if he ended up winning the Calder Cup uh, for our season if they don't make the playoffs because the, the kid's been phenomenal. The the way that he handles the puck and seeing some of the passes that he makes to set up these goals that he's he's gotten off on other guys, it's 
it's unreal and yeah. and so like we're 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 so excited to see guys like him jake ottinger ty delandria who got sent back down to the ahl just because he's on the taxi squad and and they just need him to get more time on the ice and he's not going to get it right now but um yeah i fantasy has been pretty tough for me uh i got booted from the playoffs last week so i was pretty bummed about Ooh. that yeah i uh i made some stupid moves here and there um one of which was uh trading away uh panarin uh when he was basically in russia jail and i was like i don't have time to wait for this dude to come back i don't even know if he's gonna come back oh. i don't even know if he's gonna be alive by the end of the season <laughs> and so i traded him to the only rangers fan in the league for um oh my gosh oh this is gonna hurt jack eichel and i'm like oh. eichel's about to just go nuts like and the <laughs> And then I kid you not, a week later, Eichel gets put on the IR, and they're like, it's probably going to be season ending, but maybe not. And then meanwhile, uh, Panarin's just lighting it up left and right again. And so a really stupid, stupid move. It was like the second Louis Erickson trade for Boston. It's <laughs> exactly how I felt. I yeah, was like, right? this is exactly how Boston felt when they traded away Sagan. I mean, hey you, hey, you guys are loving it, though. It's like, hey, thanks for the kid who you, just, for whatever reason, gave up on. It's like, all right, here's our core guy for the next yeah. like 20 years in dallas yeah how, yeah yeah how it's, dare he pump a couple too many beers and then boston say he has an attitude problem like well i mean everyone you, if you, that's the thing everyone in boston has an attitude problem because i've been yeah. to boston and all they do is pump beers that's the whole yeah. city the whole city yeah. has to be booted yeah they're talking about, they're, they're, they're talking about him having a problem you do also have brad marchand so Dan charo who ran a, a montreal canadian's face into the stanchion <laughs> like and you had Milan Lucic at one point in your in your team history too, but yeah, Sagan's the problem. Like, right, all right sure. Dude, Sagan's okay. one of the few guys in the NHL that, like, I I love him. He's not on the Blue Jackets. I love Sagan, but he, oh, yeah. I would take him on my team in a heartbeat. Who yeah. wouldn't take Sagan on your team? Like that that kid scores goals. Yeah, like in his except his, last year in the playoffs, but right. Which it's then was crazy I mean. is like people were you know, the thing about stars fans and this is probably going to rub some people the wrong way, specifically in Dallas is they've been poisoned by the Dallas Cowboys and they've always expected stellar play because of the, the, the run that the Cowboys had in the nineties. And there was an old radio uh, personality here who called every Monday overreaction Monday, because win or lose people would call in about the Cowboys and they're like, if they win, this is the team. We're going all the way. If they lose, fire everybody. Trade away everyone. I'm tired of it. So unfortunately, that's kind of bled over into the Stars fandom. And people are really uh, getting after John Klingberg, like right now, for an example. They're like, trade him. I don't care. Why? He, I'm like, you're an John idiot. Kling John Klingberg is a top two demon on any yeah. team right now. Like, how, why would you easily? That, yeah, that, that that's why because the fact that you like don't. Uh, it's a hockey puck. We talk football a lot, but yeah, Dallas Cowboys fans. I don't know if you are, but I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm not. A, I, being born and raised in Dallas, I'm not a Cowboys fan because I was born and raised in Dallas. Yeah, it's like <laughs> I, I, it's like it's like Pittsburgh fans and Dallas Cowboys fans are absolutely the worst fans in football. It is an absolute joke. And the fact that you guys are like you said every year, oh, this is the team, and then it's like trade everyone, and yeah. it's like it's just like it's a constant year in and year out thing with Dallas Cowboys fans. Mm -hmm. You're like like you guys need to stop producing. Like, just stop. Like, you guys are just so unnecessary right now. In it's ridiculous. It's, the it's, the it's, only it's Super Bowl that Jerry Jones wants to win is being at the top of the Forbes list, and he is, and he, he I, honest to God, until that man is no longer on this planet, I do not think the Cowboys will be good, but we don't have to talk anymore about football. It's the same thing with Stars fans. Like, they expect every season for it to be, like, the top-tier team. And then Tyler Sagan, you know, kind of struggles in the playoffs, and you're like, Everyone's like, this guy's an idiot. Like, he's the why is he even on the ice? And then you find out that he had a torn labrum and said, I want to play through it. Yeah. And that's like, that, you have no idea how much that hurts. Yeah. yeah. And, you, and you have guys in baseball. Oh, I have a splinter. I'm out for, oh, I'm, I have, um, yeah, I have something on my finger. I'm out for like two weeks. In football, I have turf toe. I'm out for six. Yeah. I mean, they're in like, you, had, you have uh, Bergeron with a punctured lung going through the playoffs right now, getting smacked almost every game. Yeah. Like Sagan's here with a labrum. You have guys with broken bones or like torn stuff or like yeah. guys who could potentially die on the ice because they actually have like, you know, organs that are punctured. And it's like, right. nah, I'll keep playing. And, you're, and you want to give Sagan crap because it's like, oh, he's exactly. struggling. It's like LeBron well, got it, carried off the court because he sprained his ankle. Meanwhile, Rich Peverly died on the bench for a couple of seconds and came back to life and said, what's the score? 
Yeah. yeah. Or or LeBron gets carried <laughs> off be, or because he gets carried off because he was dehydrated because they like <laughs> made, made the arena like super hot and he got cramps on his legs. I, I was dehydrated same this morning because I had too much to drink last night, yeah. but no one carried me to work. You yeah. know, yeah, all right. Yeah. It's the same like, thing with like Jay Boomeister. He he essentially died and they took him out, they took him to the hospital, and he wanted to continue playing. Like yep. Yeah, dude, like there's, it's like ridiculous. There's, like there's guys who are literally getting stitched in the middle, and I think it was like PK Subban. He got cut on his leg. It was a pretty good cut yeah. too. Oh yeah, stitched didn't miss him, a shift. Didn't miss a shift. Stitched him up. and Goes right back on the ice. And it's like hockey players are so under like they're just underappreciated for the fact of just like I do not care. I want to win this game. I want to win the Stanley Cup. Let's go. There's yeah. no there's no load management in hockey. No. Like baseball, you want you okay? Yeah, you get it in baseball because you're playing 162 games, and the NBA is such a joke when it comes to like, oh, we need to lessen the schedule. We need to like labor, like give these guys time off, even though they're playing like every they're playing like three games a week. Mm-hmm. And the, the NHL's like, well, that's cute. We play like four and four or five in a week, and we're skating up and down the ice. Yeah. Every it's, game, like, oh, okay, sure. It's, you it's don't the <laughs> lowest paid professional league, uh, men, well, yeah. men centric professional league in in the country, and it's insane. Yeah. Like the salary cap's under hundred million, but you have like s- baseball teams that make less than that, which is because that's what they want to do. But then you got teams mm-hmm. making like two hundred twenty million dollar payrolls. I was about to say and, you have players that essentially like MLB contracts that could buy NHL franchises. Yeah, it's yeah. unreal. Yeah, it's like yeah, and it's crazy. Like then you get like some of these NFL players, like Pat Mahomes has like a half a billion dollar contract. Yeah. For the next like what 10, 12 years. You yeah. know, like now he owns and, a and, soccer and, club overseas. It's like the and, yeah. and, and part part owner of the Royals. You're like, Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. I'm a professional player and I also own another team in another league just because I can. It's like yeah. NFL players are like, I'm just trying to make money that just to live off of for the next like you know, 20, 30 years after I retired because I'm done by the time I'm like almost 40. Right. It's, it's ridiculous. Like it's the most physical sport too. And you, I will argue that with literally anybody, mm-hmm. maybe the, except rugby. That's the only thing I, I or, 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 say, or, but. or, or America, actually Ameri- I would say American rules football or Australian rules football, because that's more offensive minded than rugby. But yeah, it's like hockey players get hit the most. They play the most. And it's like, nah, it's a, fourth favorite sport in the states and it's like let's not mention there's literally knives strapped to everyone's feet that can and will cut you and we've seen it it's like people want to like show broken legs from football plays and like oh well this is tough and i'm like okay well this guy had his throat slashed on the ice yeah Yeah, let's talk about clint malarchuk for a second yeah yeah gets gets his throat cut as the goalie of the sabers and then, like, I think it was like what two months later, he's like, "All right, let's go. I'm yeah. playing hockey or something." I just like need, that. I just like, need a little piece of plastic over the throat. We'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, right. It's like unbelievable. Okay, yeah, it's but, it's crazy. Like you, you know, you sit there and look at that compared to the other sports. You know, basketball, they're going up and you know back and forth a little bit. And then you have other guys. Like there was a game. I think it was the five overtime game between the Blue Jackets and Toronto. And they showed that like Seth Jones had skated for roughly like 11 miles or something. Unbelievable. It's yeah. insane. Did, did, didn't he have like what, 60 minutes of ice yeah. time or something he like that? Over, like, yeah, yeah, like, over 60 like, minutes. Like he literally played an entire hockey game straight. Like if it was just like if he started started and just played the entire game without sitting, that's basically what he did. Well, and exactly. the, the thing that blows my mind in the post game, they're like, how are you feeling? He's like, I'm, I'm good. I can play a whole nother game. I can go again. Yeah. Yeah, because of because the fact that he because he like you hit the wall, then he went past it, and then you got like the second wind mm-hmm. because your body just conditioned it because you he broke the wall, and it's like all right, I can just keep playing now because my legs aren't jello because I've skated for an hour. Yeah, sure. Was, let's just go. Let's just play another two games just because. Which yeah. uh, fun fact about Seth Jones? He's actually a Dallas kid. Uh, yeah. Born, I think he was born in Dallas, but they moved to Colorado. But his dad played for the Mavericks. One of the weirdest looking human beings named Popeye Jones. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's that's my tidbit for the day yeah. so i thought it was really cool because I, I believe him and his brother both ended up playing hockey even though their dad was a professional yeah. basketball player yeah it's crazy yes yeah, obviously his defenseman and his brother caleb plays for the oilers that's and, right uh, right he's a defenseman also and i know his mom if i remember his mom still lives in dallas too and they mm-hmm. they still go there in the off season and all that stuff which, yeah they, i think they still have, i think he has a house down there during yeah the, yeah yeah, so, I, I believe. Yeah, I he's on a uh, he was on another podcast, which we don't we don't need to bring up. But uh, yeah, they were 
his, his interview is hilarious. But yeah, he's uh, still around Dallas. A lot of the guys, that's what's really cool about the Dallas area is a lot of these players that come here end up staying here um, just because one, <laughs> no state tax, and two, it's just cheap to live here. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's cool to kind of see them out and about. And they love it because Dallas is still... It pains me to say this, but football and baseball and basketball first, hockey fourth, they can walk around and not get bombarded or recognized unless you're Tyler Sagan, Ben Bishop, or Jamie Ben. So, yeah, yeah, you know, or, that, yeah that's that's wild. It's, and then, yeah, like you said, plus the weather down there, you know, when it's not eight degrees and your guys are getting nice over yeah. the weather. I mean, the weather is nice down there too. Like you said, because I, I think that's like, I know Sagan has a house down there. I think, didn't mm-hmm. he have like, wasn't he like out of town? And he like had like he told the guys like hey go to my place it's just go there and just hang out and stuff during the ice yeah. storm or something like yeah, that like, yeah uh, a couple of mentions of that um, you know, Jamie Ben had some guys over um, there was a, a time when obviously we're in the tornado alley so we got a we get a bunch of tornadoes um, I want to say Ben Bishop's house was affected so Jamie Ben like took all his whole family in and it's just a cool like very like it's a tight knit group of guys you can tell oh, that they sure. really care. Um, about each other's well-being just not on the ice but off the ice and i think that gets i think that gets missed a lot and i think the nhl that's why they're still probably the fourth most popular sport in the country in the world well in the realm of the big four because they just don't put their players out there like every other league does um so i'm hoping you know obviously like we talked about the very beginning of the episode that's kind of why we started doing our podcast down here is because we want to peel back those layers and show that Hey, these guys are just dudes, you know, and yeah. even the, the, the girls playing in the NWHL, like we had a, we had, like I said, the slap shot sweethearts. Uh, we did an episode with them uh, last week and we found out that one of the girls um, couldn't play in the playoffs because she's a police officer and had yeah. to work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Even in the bubble too, like, like a lot of them were teachers and they're, Bad, they're doing a remote teaching during mm-hmm. the day and then they're playing and then they're playing the game like that night and the good thing too is like their salary cap just increased to like three hundred thousand dollars per team doubled i saw that yeah yeah like, which is still like even crazy to talk about like they're still gonna have to work like yeah. full-time jobs yeah and it's like it's it's and then they only have like six teams and stuff like that too but it's, yeah it's crazy like it's just it's but it's also cool to see like how it's growing and honestly mm-hmm. Like we've like we have, we've mentioned our uh, on our podcast like where other expansion cities you think of that would probably work for a team. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't. I think somewhere down in Dallas would probably be a good spot for you know a, a women's hockey team down there because yeah. it's because like you said like the Dallas fans would actually love it, and mm-hmm. I think I think it would actually work because then you would be able to get a team in the South that's not Florida because let's be honest, outside Tampa, mm-hmm. who really cares about Florida down there? Yeah. Right, you about hockey down there in Florida. So well, it's I mean, one of those things, like I, especially with Texas. I mean, gr- especially with hockey. Yes, you have the Dallas Stars, but I, I think Texas is such an untapped market when it comes to, especially you know, baseball and mm-hmm. hockey. Granted, you have football. You've got the Texans and you have the Cowboys. The Cowboys are arguably probably one of the biggest fan bases on the planet. Mm-hmm. For, Un- unfortunately, unfortunately. Yeah. But it's one of those things. Like, there's so many things, dude. Throw them in San Antonio. I was gonna Give say San Antonio a team. Back. San Antonio rallies around any team that goes there, like I've never seen. Uh, they only have one professional sport. They have the Spurs. That yeah. city is obsessed with the Spurs. We're talking billboards. Every commercial for every local business you see, every ad read you hear has a San Antonio spur on it. That's why I was so bummed out when the Rampage got relocated or bought out by now the Henderson Silver Knights because, like, they used the Spurs Arena. I believe it's the AT&T uh, Arena there in San Antonio. And we went to uh, an AHL Texas Stars San Antonio Rampage game, and it was almost sold out, like, on a Friday night. And this is, like, an 18,000-seat arena, and this is an AHL game. Dang. They absolutely are obsessed with their teams. Now they've got like a minor league soccer team, a minor league baseball team. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you throw like a women's team or even, and I know that there's a lot of people that are like NHL to Houston, NHL to Houston. No, think, Houston doesn't need another team. Like, mm-hmm. and like, I think NHL no play, to San Antonio. No player, yeah. No player, no players don't want to be in Houston. Cause look what happened. To all the guys who left. Yeah. Like, nah. Yeah. He, he, San Antonio would be perfect. 
Yeah, they yeah. already have the arena set up. It's already able to take the ice. We've already seen that with the AHL. It is a state-of-the-art arena. Um, I may be a bit biased because they they do sell Whataburger in that arena. So I was I was living <laughs> a dream. Wrong with that. Nothing, Nothing wrong. wrong. With that. I was legitimately living a dream where I had a patty melt in one hand, a dollar beer in the other, and I was Ooh. sitting right next to the penalty box on the glass for this AHL game. And I was like, if I die tomorrow, that is so cool with me because I've officially peaked in life yeah so yeah we, yeah, we yeah. Have a, yeah we have a patty melt a dollar beer and you're watching hockey i mean i don't know oh. like, name, name something else that would just beat that i mean yeah i mean you, the stars could have won the stanley cup last year but well, outside of that <laughs> hey at least you guys won a cup though so i mean you know this is I'm, true i'm like i'm like some of us here who haven't seen their team win. i mean wow. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh oh my god Kick the, Sorry, he gets eliminated from the dead. playoffs I've never did, been there before <laughs> Kick the man while he is down so i i have to sometimes just, just let alex have know to that sometimes you, know. you do it constantly <laughs> Well, I mean, it doesn't Sorry. help that he's also wearing a rebirth franchise that has also not won a Stanley Cup. So it's like, yeah, you, you yeah. can't bring it on yourself a little bit. It's and, fine. He is wearing I mean, blue, he is wearing a blue jacket hat too. So I yes. mean, he's got. I mean, it's fine. It, you have the Calder winner right here, so it's fine. Don't worry about maybe, it. Maybe, no, maybe, maybe. No, no. He will. I, I'm throwing I'm throwing my hat in for Robertson right now. Nope. I'm just calling it now. I, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's just like with the playoffs, it's, it's gonna, I think the fact that the Minnesota wild having already clinched hurts his chances because I don't think they're going to need to give him as much ice time as they would if they were still in the hunt for the playoffs, obviously seating and everything is something, but the stars have to win out. So yeah. Robertson is going to have to put up the same type of numbers. I think, he, I don't know if he got a point yesterday, but I want to say he was at a point streak of nine games. Mm -hmm which even for a, a veteran is a great streak. So the oh, fact yeah. that a rookie is out there and, but I mean, he is on a line with Joe Pavelski and Joe Pavelski has shown that he is not done. He is not anywhere yeah. near done. Yeah. No. How would you, how would you feel being a Sharks fan right now? Seeing that like the guy that sh the Sharks were like, nah, he's done. We got nothing left for him to do. Dude, he goes, he goes to Dallas and he's like, don't um, even get me started about, about him. About this. <laughs> Every single time the blue jackets played the stars this year, he, this man, I guy. swear, got about 14 power play goals a game. And they were yeah. every single one was him standing right in front of the crease, deflecting it every yep. single time. I mean, you see, you've seen the famous Instagram or whatever social media video of him just standing in front of the net. And I don't know if it's Ben or whoever it was, maybe Gary Onoff, just ripping just the nastiest, fastest wristers. And he's just going dink, dink, dink. And I'm like, that's not normal like no, that, no. <laughs> that is Joe, the epitome of consistency yeah you know, like, joe, like joe pavelski is probably his resting heart rate is probably like 22 and even like <laughs> even when his heart's racing it's like 49 which yeah. is a, a normal person's resting heart rate and he's just like all right another day at the office Goal. You'll, you'll see him all doing right, that yeah. while scrolling instagram at the same time not yeah. even looking at the stick you yeah, got kids yeah. Day, the kids these days saying no uh no chill and meanwhile joe pavelski is all chill all the time <laughs> yeah i like ice in the van he probably has like the he has like the ice in his veins from the mm -hmm. actual rink like that's yeah just, he, like he doesn't drink ice water he drinks like rink water because that's just basically what he does <laughs> he, li he lives hockey it's like just yeah. stick it in my just stick it in my veins let's go it's yeah like, i will say that was right. probably one of the best pickups that the stars made in the past I would say decade. I mean, oh, he's yeah. been a phenomenal yeah, pickup. Without a doubt. Without oh, for a doubt. Sure. I mean, the, the fact of you guys, like your defense is also just absolutely just disgusting. You, see, you got Klinberg. Mm -hmm. And the fact that even in the draft, too, you guys got some studs in the yeah. defense. Like it's just absolutely insane. And the fact that you're one of your D-men was in the fastest skater two years ago when we actually – when we actually did have all star games, in yeah. Oh, what what's that like? What's that life having an NHL weekend, like all star weekends again? But right. Still, though, it's like it's crazy how your guys' defense is like. All right, we're gonna put guys in fastest skater, and mm -hmm. we're just gonna body people and put pucks in the net like it's no one's business. Well, what's so funny is if you like rewind five years ago, maybe give or take, all the fans were like, "Our defense is trash." That is the reason we are not winning games is our defense. And now you look at it and you've got Heisken and you've got Klingberg, you've got Essa Lindell, who arguably is one of the most underrated defensemen in the league because the guy skates like almost 30 to 40 minutes every night. 
Wait, is this uh, is this before her after he flops from getting cross checked in the back? I, I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> I, that was, I mean, I believe he was nominated for a couple of Oscar awards, but I thought, yeah, I wasn't gonna say anything until you brought it up. I'm like, I really can't not bring that up. No, it's completely we, fair. It's completely fair. But then, like yeah. outside of that, the dude's a straight Iron Man, and then you have yeah. guys like Oleksiak, who ironically was traded to Pittsburgh, and then Pittsburgh traded him back to us, and he's had a bit of a resurgence in the last couple of years. Um, yeah. I will say there is one bummer about our defense and i don't know if you guys remember him but it's steven johns um, oh yeah yeah, yeah, I remember, yeah i remember johns yeah man and i think he's actually coming off of the books after this season but i mean talk about just an absolute just like bummer of a story the fact that he had post-traumatic uh concussion symptoms um to the point where he couldn't turn lights on um you know then it started to get into his mental and the fact that he played a little bit last season but I think was taken out in the playoffs was such just like wind out of the sails because he's another guy that's much like Alexiak where he's bigger, he's more physical. And so having him on, I think he was on the second line um, alongside high uh, which now is Alexiak spot. But like having that big guy plus that quick, fast defenseman is such a great like mesh of styles of play on each line that without Johns, I mean, yeah, we have a great defense, but to me, Having him would honestly put us in such a better place. Um, I love Sekera. He's great. We've got Hanley, who finally is getting some starts because, unfortunately, guys have been unhealthy. But, you know, Pissick was a pick pickup that they got, and he's been in the rotation a little bit. So, um, But, yeah, we've got some young guys. Thomas Harley's down in the AHL right now. He was our draft pick um, a couple years back, and I think he's probably going to crack um, the NHL roster next season. But, yeah, kind of weird to say, like, you know, five years ago, now I can say like our defense is stacked. So it'll yeah. be really interesting, obviously, with the uh, expansion draft. Um, you know, there are some rumors floating around that, you know, maybe Jason Dickinson is the guy that the the Kraken take from Dallas. Maybe Klingberg, depending on the contract and how that goes. Um, you know, a lot of people expected it to be Hudobin, um, but I don't think Hudobin has had a really good season. And I think that might turn them off. Um, I think a guy like, is it pronounced Dreiger down in Florida or is it Dreiger? I was uh, his name I, th- up. I think it's Dreger. Dreger yeah. down in Florida. I yeah. think he's had a phenomenal season, and the fact that he's only eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars a season on the books. Yeah, um, I think everyone is freaking out about Kadobin, but when you've got a guy like Dreger down in Florida waiting there, it would not surprise me if the Kraken like jump on someone like that for contract issues. I yeah. could easily see that happening. You have obviously have Bobrovsky, but the thing mm-hmm. is now you have Spencer Knight, who's been a stud already in his way uh, two yeah. or three games three and oh yeah yeah, there, yeah we, we, i would we be just, taking dragger and leave spencer mm-hmm. yeah the, the blackhawks just played him last night and that dude just he's so yeah. good yeah, yeah it's so it's dumb speaking about your guys's goalies what are your thoughts on a, what odiger is that how you pronounce his last uh, name Ottinger. Ottinger. yeah yeah how, what are you like what are your thoughts on it? because the fact that yeah, the kid was born in 98 like this yeah. kid is young but it's like he like I've heard he's got some really good ups. Like, what are your thoughts on him possibly? If like if they don't if they do move on from Kadobin and they roll with Bishop and um Ottinger or Ottinger, how like how what are your thoughts on that kid in the as a future possibly with Bishop? I think the league should be scared because he's only getting better as he plays more. Um, I think that obviously it is a very bad situation that you you don't have your your star goaltender all season. <clears throat> but it could not happen at a better time for stars fans because it's given Ottinger the, the reps in the NHL um, for him to really kind of polish his game. So what I think is going to happen is like we talked about, I don't think Hudobin's going to be the one that Seattle picks. I think you're still going to have Hudobin. You're still going to have Bishop because Bishop is going to come back next season, be hundred percent healthy and knock on wood that he actually stays healthy because that's been an issue of his his yeah. entire career uh right but that's going to give ottinger the opportunity to go back down to the ahl work on what he knows he needs to work on and when that contract for dobby is up and i believe we signed him to a three-year deal so two years after this season if he's still with the team and they don't resign him and you have ottinger you've basically got your guy for the next eight nine years uh Jeez. ottinger is is like ben bishop if Ben Bishop was just a couple of inches shorter, because Ottinger is no small kid. He's six, four. So he's yeah, no small he, dude. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, tremendous upside. Uh, people have been kind of quietly chattering about him for the past couple of years. And the fact that he has had this opportunity and he has gone in and he has played the way he's played has been 
really a breath of fresh air. So uh, I think he's going to be one of the best goalies in the league. Um, I think he's more of the traditional bring up. You know, it's where he's he's in the minors for quite a while. He gets his reps in. He gets a little bit of time in the show. Sent back down, comes back up, you know, not like, you know, this you know, night, you know, comes on the scene, gets three starts, three and oh, lights yeah. out. This kid's the future and it's obvious, but you still got 10.5 million going to Bob. So, Oof. yeah, that's, yeah, that's definitely rough um, for sure. So uh, we did talk about earlier about, you know, the stars winning the cup and the whole situation with, you know, Brett Hall's foot, you know, foot in the crease. Mm-hmm. What I know you might have a biased answer towards this, but maybe if you took your bias out of it, what are your thoughts on that controversial call with Brett Hall and, you know, Dominic Hoshik with his, with his skate in the ice in the crease in that cup final? Uh, I mean, it's hard to not have bias. It's hard to take yeah. that. Uh, it's hard yeah. to remove that. Uh, that being said, if I am a fan from the outside watching in that I'm not, I don't have an affiliation with Buffalo or Dallas for me, it's a phenomenal story because it's obvious that there was something that the referees might've missed. And then going back uh, just how they kind of handled it, which I think was handled extremely poorly um, because, you know, they were like, well, uh, the play was already in motion, but they also were like, but, you know, we're not going to say that, uh, you know, a couple of days later that we made the right call. Um, that being said, we won the cup and <laughs> yeah. Buffalo has been an absolute dumpster fire pretty much ever since. So yeah, you, you, I don't you know. Guys, you guys broke, you guys basically broke them. And then I think the Kings yeah. broke them in 06. So yeah. you guys in Carolina basically broke Buffalo. Yeah. And I mean, you look at them now, I, phenomenal Ooh. uniforms, great uniforms, but that is literally about it. They uh, uh, they need to go back to the Buffalo head, in my opinion, and the black, red, and with silver. The, with the swords. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. might, at this point with how poorly of a franchise. You, you like, need to do something. You need to do something. To. Like if you're Switch going to be bad, like at least give me a reason to want to buy the Jersey. Cause it looks cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, it, it's fun to talk about now, um, but the stars have a Stanley cup. And I think the fact that they actually went to the finals the next year showed that they weren't a fluke. Like they were a solid team in the late nineties, early two thousands. Um, and the fact that, you know, obviously coming from Buffalo and only being in Dallas for, I think six years at that point, seven max. And for them to actually make it, um, it just shows like at the time, the whole front office was so dedicated to, putting a product on the ice that they knew was going to be one of the best teams uh, was, was really fun to be a part of. Um, it's one of those things where I'll always remember where I was at. Obviously it was like an overtime game at the time. So I was maybe uh, like 12 or 13 years old at the time. Yeah. Uh, so I was of sound mind. I knew what was going on, but I was the only one awake in my home at the time. And it was just like probably one thirty, And I thought, you know, I, this is the coolest thing in the world. So yeah, um, you know, it, it, it is kind of funny that there is a little bit of that history around it. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's it's still awesome to go back and watch the Stanley Cup video and everything that went into it. And um, I don't know if you guys know, but Pantera uh, has our goal yeah. song, which I am going to be yeah. biased and say we have the best goal song. But we also have a song that was specifically written for our team. That, yeah, um, that is pretty nice. As a Pantera, yeah. as a Pantera fan. I, I can dig it. I, I can yeah. dig how, how that works. So you said jerseys. Let's say, say some of another a fan of another team or just a neutral was looking to get a Dallas Stars jersey, but you can't pick Bishop. You can't pick Sagan or Ben or Pravelski. Uh, what five guys would you say that this would have to be the jersey to go after? And would you say it would be the green or the whites or whatever jersey color you can go with? Like what five guys and what jersey – design would or would you pick to, for someone to go get instead of the big names Name instead five of the other big guys. names uh dennis garyanoff um he led the led the team in goals last season he's had an interesting season this uh so far um he's starting to get a little hot now obviously uh, aforementioned jason robertson the kid's gonna be a stud he's gonna be a pillar of this organization uh same thing with miro heiskanen a kid's going absolutely nowhere. They're about to sign him to a monster contract. I, I believe probably at the end of this season, uh, if not next. Um, then the last two, I mean, just because his name is so interesting to me and he is a good goaltender, Jake Ottinger. I mean, you know, the fact that he is going to be on this team for a very, very long time to come. Um, and last, 
And it's tough. I I, I want to say, I don't know. I, I, I would say Hudobin to a degree just because he is a fan favorite. The guy is just a, a, a phenomenal interview. Um, I'm going to go with uh, maybe a dark horse that we talked about a little bit earlier that actually just got sent back down to the AHL, and that's Ty Delandria. Uh, okay. Ty Delandria kind of has that. He kind of reminds people in Dallas of a young Jamie Ben. Uh, okay. Maybe they're they're calling him like mini Ben because he is a little bit smaller in stature. But I love the fact that he is an agitator. He'll get in your face and he does not mind fighting. Like I love the fact that he'll throw the body around. He's not afraid to get into it. And he knows how to play the mental game, which I think, um, you know, they're not even called goons anymore. They're called agitators. Uh, I think which that is, is an which art. Is fine. Which is fine. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah. I mean, yeah, honestly, you kind of love the agitators, the, you know, the, you know, agitators that won't be go too far like uh, uh brad marchand but yeah. yeah you love to have the agitator that's like okay he knows that he knows how to play the mental warfare mm-hmm. but isn't gonna slew foot you or punch you in the back of the head because right. why not yeah well and that's why i've got the antoine Roussel jersey behind me it breaks my heart that he's not with dallas anymore i love him in vancouver and i know he gets under a lot of people's skin but oh, yes. he is oh, he is bar yes. none bar none my favorite player of all time uh, just because of the fact that he's not the best guy out there and he knows it, but he, he skates his ass off every single second that he's on the ice. And it doesn't yeah. matter if he's been on the team for one minute or 10 years, he's going to fight like you guys have the same last name. So yeah. the fact that he, he puts himself out there and he is probably one of the, the more frustrating players of the game, but I love that. Like before yeah. him, for me, it was Steve Ott. So Guys oh, like that, I, mean, I, remember, I uh, always yeah. loved, always loved those guys. Yeah, I remember watching the Steve Ott, Bo- I guess the Boston Bruins, where I forget who he like stuck someone in the boards, and it's just like a line brawl for a good like five ten minutes, and it's just like there's just like three like Bruins guys on Steve Ott because he mm-hmm. actually just just boards this dude. But yeah, yeah, Steve Ott was a problem for yeah. sure. Oh, absolutely, for a long time he was a problem to deal with. And the fact that, and this is, I don't know if this is going to ring some bells or rattle some cages, but the fact that Steve Ott and Sean Avery were basically on the same line at one time. Oh my uh, gosh. I forgot, I forgot about that. Yeah, that was. Everyone does. And that's honestly outside of the Roussel rookie jersey. The Sean Avery stars jersey might be one of my grails if I can get my hands on it. Just because it's he's so polarizing. The fact that yeah. he basically got booted out of Dallas because he told someone his wife, like he had slept with his wife. I it, like <laughs> it's just so it's Jeez. so great. Oh man. Sean Avery, yeah, he's he's an interesting character, and I'm putting that lightly. I'm putting that in oh, absolutely. The, the nicest way possible. Because <laughs> yeah. there are some thoughts about Sean Avery. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I'm definitely sure there are. It's kind of one of those things. <laughs> I'm hoping Dallas does well. Um, I kind of secretly am wanting them to make the playoffs, but yeah, because screw Nashville. <laughs> Where no one, no one wants them in there. Like I, I can't I'm, stand Nashville. I, and, I, no, I've never felt closer to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, I absolutely, with that. I absolutely hate Nashville. With I do too, a passion. And I hate everything. I hate everything about their organization, from their uniforms to that god awful goal song, Tim McGraw's "I Like It, I Love It." Um, um or, I, or, or the or the or the you suck chant to yeah up. or how about the fact they put up a banner for literally everything like yeah like hey we won the most games in the regular season and then we absolutely got throttled in the playoffs but hey we did really good before that uh, yeah. and, and i'm sorry the fact that they basically stole like detroit's like tradition of throwing stuff on the ice but now it's a catfish like yeah. okay you're, you're not original just just stop yeah, and so the fact that we we basically just mopped them in the Winter Classic, and we'll always have that. And that was the, fantastic. Yeah, that was that great. was a beautiful that was a beautiful experience all the way around. But yeah, yeah, I'm glad we can agree that I don't think anyone wants Nashville to do well ever, no. and I'm fine with that. Yeah, so yeah, expect, what, yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. <laughs> yeah. While you're since you brought up the uh, Winter Classic. What are your thoughts on Corey Perry's about 11 <laughs> seconds of ice time in that winter classic? Oh, um, uh, the, the, the the ultimate walk of shame too. Dude, oh, it was, so, it it was, was like so a mile long. and a half. <laughs> I don't know if you've so seen, bad. Uh, I don't know if you've seen someone dubbed. I, I can't remember which Green Day song. Uh, the oh. I Walk a Lonely Road. And oh it was yeah, that, literally that was so it was great. Yeah. But they did it in slow mo. Um, uh, yeah, it was yeah, so, it was so weird. long. 
Yeah, but it was so weird because like uh, I was extremely lucky to be at the Winter Classic. I mean, that's like oh, nice. There you go. Uh, honest, like it's hard to to imagine another experience alone like aside from being like in the arena if the stars were to win the stanley cup i don't know if there will ever be another moment that can match that but um it was so weird because at the time like you've got 80 some odd thousand people around you and everyone goes quiet because you see this hit um i can't remember who uh who he hit at the time but he was on the ice for quite a while and obviously people were getting in perry's face and you want to talk about uh an attitude adjustment like having to realize that you had to root for Corey perry for a season was so it was like a was the weirdest feeling ever because you know you find out that you got him and you're like but i hate this guy yeah. everybody <laughs> hates this guy everyone yeah. outside of anaheim hates this guy but wait now he's on my team so i i guess i like this guy but yeah. i but i hate this guy i hate yeah. him but the only reason i'm rooting for him is because he has that logo that yeah, he's wearing he's on his jersey that yeah, your beautiful yeah. green on his jersey, but yeah, it's like it's like so it's like that feeling of like I want to hate you, but I can't. Yeah, you know? honestly, yeah. I kind of had the same feeling to an extent when uh, the Blue Jackets got Max Domi this year. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I, this guy drives me nuts. I on one of my twitters, it's a it's a burner. He blocked me on it. That's one of the greatest <laughs> accomplishments I've had. So he actually blocked me on it, and then I'm like, oh, dude, this guy's a, he's a clown. He's never come to Columbus, and then they traded for him. I was like, well, oh boy shit this sucks yeah yeah luckily i i mean he hadn't blocked me again yet but we'll see i don't know i think uh i think torts is doing just a good job of blocking him on his own so (laughs) yeah everybody but yeah but like well how well like how where how weird was it that you're actually at that you're at the cotton bowl and you're seeing Corey pair with the longest walk just ever of anyone you're just like it was unbelievable it was unbelievable like, like, because you guys have put the ice so far in the middle of the stadium that it's like, mm-hmm. oh yeah, if you want to get to the locker room, you got to walk about like a mile that direction and have fun while everyone's just like yelling at you. Like, what? well, what was so funny about the whole thing, and not funny because obviously, some you know, the guy got hurt and couldn't yeah. play, so I couldn't imagine being in his skates, like, let alone Corey Perry. Like, hey, you have to walk off of the Winter Classic and you're not getting to play it because you you screwed up. But yeah, the other like guy's having, seconds in. Yeah, yeah, but the other guy is getting carted off in a golf cart because he can't physically walk. And so that was kind of funny because you had a, you had a golf cart going up and down that path. I don't think they showed it, but it was it was a surreal. Like the entire experience was unbelievable. Uh, the the guys that I went with and I had an absolute blast. I mean it's hard to describe the atmosphere you you're basically tailgating you know this is obviously a couple months before covid became you know prominent and the the, the pandemic began uh so being there and just being a part of the atmosphere seeing it I mean, fireworks uh hearing pantera played on the loudspeaker um you know chanting the dallas stars uh we have a tradition when you know during the national anthem you know, they say stars twice. And so everyone screams it at the top of their lungs. Hearing 90,000 some odd people scream stars at the top of their lungs in the Cotton Bowl. It's, it, you know, it's it's a chills moment that you'll never forget. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I'm, i you know, obviously people are getting vaccinated. The, the pandemic is, you know, knock on wood, hopefully slowing down a little bit. And hopefully we've got a like some kind of a, a grasp on it. Because, I mean, even watching the Winter Classics were a, a ball. So... Yeah. Um, I'm hoping that we get to a point where we can have it again, because, you know, given the opportunity, I, I would love to travel and, and be a part of it as kind of an outside spectator, because being a part of it, like having so much emotionally invested and like knowing that we needed to win the game on top of being there, um, yeah. was, was really cool. So, um, you know, highly recommended if, if anyone is able to attend, uh, you know, when that time comes, do it, you will not regret it. Um, you know, drink a bunch of Pedialyte the night before because you're going to get <laughs> throttled. Um, yeah, for and sure. There, there's going to be lines for every porta potty, and that's going to hurt a lot. But you're not going to feel like shit after the game. So th- yeah. that's my recommendation. Yeah, I'll for let sure. you know what it's like going to a, a Winter Classic game eventually. Yeah, oh, we're supposed to have one this year. No, we were supposed oh, to oh, have. Oh, one. We were supposed to have the uh, Global Series. We were supposed oh, to play in Finland. Right. Oh, yeah, because yeah, right. we had two games scheduled against, I believe it was Colorado. Oh, that's right. Um, that's right. Car- Carol- yeah, that's right. Carolina had the Winter Classic this year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know if that's going to get redone or anything like that. I know there's uh, Columbus actually 
recently made, when I say recently, I think in the last two years, made a bid to get a winter classic at the shoe uh, in Columbus at the Ohio State football stadium. Oh, that would be cool. And apparently before there was a lot of talk that the Ohio State didn't want to do it, and blah, blah, blah. Well, now it's coming out that Ohio State is totally on board. Like everyone's wanting to work together and get it done. Like, yeah, because be they, 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 they know they can make money off it. So yeah, that's I was going to say, especially like, after this last season, not having full, you know, full stands. Yeah. 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 Oh, no, for sure. Yeah. And it's, you know, I live in Columbus and I hate Ohio State, but it's one of those things I would 100% go. I, I, mm-hmm. It would be a lot of fun to be able to go to a massive game. Honestly, dude, if it were the Penguins and the Flyers at the shoe, I would probably still go. Just because the the atmosphere for anybody would be great. Now I'd still wear a Blue Jackets jersey and make mm-hmm. the entire f- crowd just want to kill me, but that's fine. That's what I'm here for. And meanwhile, you've got Zach. Yeah, you're, who's probably, you're, 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 you're one of those guys who wears it. I was gonna say you're probably your fists are probably shaking because What's he that? didn't mention Chicago in a Winter Classic game. Because apparently that's just what NBC does. They're <laughs> like, oh, there's a Winter Classic game. I'm sure yeah. Chicago would love to be involved. <laughs> Oh, it's every single time I'm, there's a winter classic, it's brought up immediately. First thing that comes to mind: Chicago, Pittsburgh, or Philly, all mm-hmm. the time, or you know Boston. It. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually good with us having winter classics because we do not do well in those. So, I'm good for off for the next like decade of not being in one of them. So, <laughs> I second that. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm <laughs> actually. It might, it might be a take that people might not agree with, but I've seen some Blackhawks fans like, yeah, I'm kind of glad we're not in one of these because we do not do well. So I'm actually not upset about that. Yeah. Give it to someone else. We're, yeah. we're good for a while. Like that That's the loss I would like not to have on our record for the season. So There you go. Yeah. No, and I, I think Winter Classics anywhere um, just brings more attention to the sport. And I'm hoping because of how well uh, the Winter Classic did in Dallas, it opens up markets, um, you know, to do it elsewhere. You know, like Columbus, uh, you know, just off the top of my head, like we were just talking about, you know, maybe where the market isn't as big, uh, but people just want to be at that. They yeah. just want to be a part of it. So, well, well you, talk, you were talking about go to South Florida. I mean, yeah, you're not going to have Panthers fans going because they don't even mm-hmm. know if they even have a team, but do it the hard, <laughs> do it, the, do it the hard rock at hard rock, the stadium down there in Miami. You could easily put a, a rink in there and do something, but I mean, oh, yeah. you have to figure out the weather and stuff because it is South Florida. But I mean, it, it, could, it could work there. Because I why? think so. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they had they had the one in, in California when it was like seventy some odd degrees. Now, obviously, oh, yeah, like Tahoe, yeah, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't uh, or no, not even that. I want to say it was even further back uh, when they did. I, I was it the Kings and somebody else. I just oh, vaguely remember no, it no, being no, like, no, oh, that was no, that was uh, Colorado. Yeah, that was at uh, the U.S. That was the Air Force Stadium. Uh, yes, and it was yeah, like, that was in Colorado. Yeah, that was Colorado Springs. Oh yeah. no, 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 that was like this is like even further back. I want to say it was in Los Angeles. And I, I'll never forget it because it was like a beautiful oh, sunny yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was like 70 the, um, degrees and you could see puddles on the ice and the players were like getting super upset because the, the sun was bouncing off the ice and they oh, couldn't see. Was that, the, was that the Rose Bowl or was that? I think it might have been. Or no, that was Levi Stadium. That's where it was. Yeah, yeah, was Levi. It, yeah, yeah. It was not ideal. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, of course, in, in, in like Tahoe, you know, they try to schedule the game in the middle of the after, in the afternoon and it's like, Oh, by the way, there's sunlight, so they had to play it at night. But yeah. The fact, yeah, but you, if you play at the Hard Rock Arena down there in South, in South Florida, mm-hmm. they have lights. The, they have lights there. You can easily do that game at night with those lights at that stadium. Yeah. That'd be a fantastic winter classic if you want to put it in a warmer state to get people going there for sure. Absolutely. And I, I mean, I'm going to name drop it. I don't think the guy needs any more money. I don't want him to make any more money. But I think even having some, not even a winter classic, but like a heritage game or something at AT&T Stadium in Dallas uh, oh, would yeah. be awesome because it is climate controlled. They can open up the windows on the sides, but they can keep it climate controlled. And having that gigantic screen, because it's obviously not going to cover a lot of like territory as far as the rink on the field, as we saw with the Cotton Bowl. But because of how big the screen is, it, it's a very easy watch. Yeah, uh, could, could you imagine a hundred thousand something fans watching a hockey? I think they'll probably break. Like, I think that's probably most close to the big houses, like yeah. record of most fans at a game. Yeah. For oh, for hockey. sure. That'd yeah. be insane. Yeah. I was I was lucky enough to go to WrestleMania there, so I can attest that. Oh, there you go. It's very difficult to see what's going on, but thank goodness that they have those gigantic screens to look at. 
Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's the one thing I like about all the outdoor games, especially with well, these special games, is they kind of are making these rivalries even more prominent. So you have especially mm-hmm. like the Pittsburgh and Philly is doing more, and then you'll sit there and get it's so like the one how far was this the Kings and the Ducks. Yeah. And you get these rivalries going. That's why one thing, especially with Columbus, that I had been I had thought of is getting, you know, you have the Ohio State Michigan rivalry that everybody mm-hmm. knows about. Get the Blue Jackets and the Red Wings. Play it, even even if you don't go back and forth, play a game in Cleveland at the like at the Browns uh football stadium. The, with knowing how fans are in Cleveland with their sports teams, that would be a lot of fun because mm-hmm. you know all up there, all the hockey fans are most likely either Blue Jackets or Red Wings fans. And obviously there's gonna be shit, some Chicago fans up there because they don't like the Red Wings. So I have the root for Chicago, but you just shut your face right. Now. <laughs> I will not since every five seconds. Well, it'd be nice to have a cup. <laughs> but hey, I, have to, I have to remind you, man, you know, just, to, you know, keep you on your toes. <laughs> Whatever. Stop talking. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and block you on my phone real quick. All right. You just got Max. We got Max Domi. Yes. That's all right. It's all right. <laughs> I'm not upset about it. No one likes Max Domi anyway. Whoa. His dad probably likes him. That's oh, yeah. Him. His dad does. And his sister, <laughs> that's about it. Max, I love you. Um, <laughs> Please don't block me. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. Not on this I'm, one. I'm, I won't tell you my. <laughs> on my on my four other accounts. <laughs> yeah. Shh. Don't tell him what they are. <laughs> he doesn't need to know. A Nuddle underscore. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> hush your face. Oh, but, man. Yeah, it's it's one of those things I, I want to see. Obviously, I'm biased, but I want Columbus to get it. But I want every team to have – I'd like to see more of a rotation of mm-hmm. all the outdoor games because I'm, me, frankly, I'm tired of always seeing Philadelphia and Pittsburgh or Boston and whoever, you know. And, of course, it's, you know – they they've been a part of the league for 20 minutes and Vegas gets one and it's it's one of those things that's super frustrating. Yeah, that's a whole different that's a whole different topic in itself with how Vegas has been treated and how the quote unquote fans like the day ones and it's like well, cool I'm whatever I mean I guess I'm a, a day one Dallas fan but that's also been over 25 years now but uh, yeah that's <laughs> the fact that they've been so successful so fast and it, it just. It doesn't grind my gears because I do love the fact that the that the the league is growing, and then obviously they open the door for Seattle. So I know Seattle is going to absolutely rally around that team, and oh, it's for sure going to be insane. Um, I can't wait for cracking alternate jerseys because we know they're going to mm-hmm. be sick. So oh, for, oh, sure. for sure, they're yeah, no sweet. doubt. Yeah, yeah, speaking of the Kraken, um, earlier today they've paid their final payment uh into the expansion fees so now they're finally officially the 32nd team uh of the nhl so now they can start making all of the trades and signings and things like that so i think once the playoffs start we'll see a couple things maybe trading for some picks or something um but i think we could see some movement out of seattle here in the near future so that's i think that's pretty cool seeing all the stuff and they're officially part of the NHL now well, since they finalized all those payments. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah. It was cool to see how the, the, the Twitter verse rallied around it as well. Like you yeah. had all of the hockey teams like, Hey, congratulations. Like, Hey, welcome. It's awesome that you're here. And it's just, people don't realize how tight knit the hockey community is. Like we might all have different teams. We might disagree on pretty much everything, but as long as it's a hockey centric conversation, like everyone is just a hundred percent behind it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, it's really true. it's really cool. I mean, especially you see the games where guys get hurt. Mm-hmm. And no matter what, everyone is going to sit there and they're going to be quiet. You always have the amount of respect from all the fans and all the players, no matter what happens or who it is. You know, for example, look at um, Patrick Marlowe, the game that he just skated where he beat Gordy Howe's record. Every single person from the other team came up, shook his mm-hmm. hand, like, hey, man, congrats. Even if they've never met him before. It's still one of those things. You, it's respect. You don't see that in other sports. No, no. Especially from the fans. No. 
the fans will dump a beer on you if you say, yeah. oh, man, that was a terrible play. Uh, excuse yeah. me? <laughs> yeah, like what? <laughs> Which ironically, if we look back in like the 70s and 80s, there may or may not have been some brawls with the players and the fans in the NHL, but we've cleaned it up a little bit. We've we've become a different yeah. we're different people now. Yeah, uh, for sure. Speaking of Max Domi, just like when his dad and the, dad, yeah, his dad squirted the water on the fan, he fell over into the penalty box. That was fantastic. That was absolutely hilarious. Yeah, we learn. We it's a it's a it's a growing pain, you yeah. know, as a sport. <laughs> just so yeah. uh, now we know, don't do that. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's maybe, not, maybe it's not. Fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a bit. Just a bit. Yeah. But yeah, Zach, I think that's about all we've got for Fink. Yeah, so, no, yeah. Almost an hour and a half of just straight hockey talk. A lot longer than I thought it was going to be, but hey, not complaining. So. No, never yeah, I, had a, I had a nickel. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Same for I, I mean, our first episode was literally three hours. When yeah. we first started this podcast back in January, it was oh, a wow. three It was a three hour episode. So, we yeah. Were, yeah, we were talking. It's like, you know what? We're going to try and shoot for about an hour and a half. And then it turns into like, holy crap. Well, we've been recording for three hours. All right, guys, have a good night. Yeah. Yeah. I think we started like at nine o'clock and I yeah. think doing that and then all the stuff afterwards. I think we didn't, go, I think we didn't officially stop and like officially, officially stop until like two in the morning. So yeah, it was, I, was, I think was I was, a, was up until about three thirty editing and all that stuff. And yeah. It was, yeah. It was a pain. It was a yeah. pain. But well, yeah, I'm glad we could keep it. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Thank God yeah. from YouTube. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, right. For sure. Oof. Yeah. Um, yeah. So where can people find you personally? If you have a personal Twitter, where can people find your guys' podcast, you know, on Twitter, social media, YouTube, wherever? Where, where can people find you guys? MySpace. Yeah. Uh, Zanga. That'd, 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 that'd be nice. That'd be, that'd be nice to bring Mike back. Oh, yeah, my God. Bring. I forgot about Zanga. Zanga was the first. Oh, oh, Zanga's yeah. probably the reason that we're all doing this now is because they made us think that we were important media people when we were like 12 or 13 years old. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, we, yeah. You can, you can find it. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, you can find me personally as uh, at Laces Out Finkel. Um, I really just kind of approached the name and I was like, I love Ace Ventura. So, Laces Out Finkel. <laughs> Uh, and that's, that's on, on, twi- on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, I welcome all followers. I'm not one of those weird creepers where it's like, this guy's account's amazing, but it's private, so you have to follow him. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Um, same thing with the uh, the podcast, uh, at Wada Hockey on Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Uh, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, pretty much anywhere you can find podcasts, we're on there. Um We've got some pretty cool items in our store right now. We've got some stickers. We've got a couple shirts left, some tumblers. Uh, so we're having a blast. We've got some more stuff in mind. Uh, we, we we just have been having an absolute ball, like growing the brand and, you know, getting to meet a lot of people. Obviously, uh, appreciate you guys having me on. And, um, you know, anytime you guys want to come on Water Hockey, we'll, we'll have you on. And we'll uh, uh, Alex will send you a bottle of spicy ketchup from Whataburger and uh, hey. we'll, we'll show you the light. Oh what? What? Okay, okay, okay. So, my, my, well, you've my, had it. You've had it. Oh, you know yeah, that's what it, true. You, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You've tasted the victory in the hot sun, Alex. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, that's very true. I have the so. most of Texas I've experienced was being in the airport in Dallas for like an hour and a layover, and that's it. So, was it geez. the DSW or Love Field? You remember uh, DSW? Oh, okay. See, that's. And that's even like if you were in Love Field, you would know you were in Texas because they have a Whataburger, they have a Chili's, yeah. they have a Chick Fil A, uh, and a Texas. I want to say not a Texas Roadhouse, but they basically yeah. was like, hey, anything Texas related or Texas born, we're gonna put in this airport. That yeah. would be that would be hilarious. If they did have a Texas Roadhouse in there as well, because why not? <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's very on on brand with the state. But yeah, uh, we'll, we'll have to get you guys down to Dallas sometime soon. Um, I don't know if you guys skate, but there's a ton of hockey to be played. Um, and then, you know, obviously once things open back up a little bit more, um, you know, minor league hockey, NHL, it's it's all in Dallas. Sweet. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I haven't skated in a long time, so maybe not, but I'm more than willing to go, go you know, hit some beers and, you yeah. know, you know, just do hockey in general, just watch games and stuff. So I'm, I'm all, I'm also all there for that. Oh, all yeah. For that. Oh, you for know, sure. You get a water burger and all that good stuff. So you give me yeah. all the give me all the patty melts. And yeah, the, we can. We can Doctor Pe- Doctor Pe- Doctor Pe- Pepper milkshakes because one yep. dollar, right? We can make <laughs> well, that happen. It is it is Dallas. So uh, saw your blades in the background there. So we'll have to go uh, some skating and do some a little bit of rollerblading too. Yeah, we've got some uh, we've got some rinks around here and uh, 1998. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll, go, go. we'll go. We'll go. We'll we'll rewind back to the Mighty Ducks days and uh, we'll have like giant Technicolor jackets on and. 
it'll be a whole thing. Sweet. Just like Brink, yeah, man. It, oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, dude. You <laughs> want to talk about a I love that movie. movie. Yeah. Oh, man. Hey, Disney Plus, so you can watch it on there. Oh, <laughs> I have like, just, many just, times. Just like the Mighty Ducks. I am a 30-year-old who uh, watches the Mighty Ducks and Brink all the Same. time on Disney. Same. Same. New episode oh, drop tonight. You're welcome, <laughs> Disney Plus. <Yeah. laughs> no free ads, or unless you want to start promoting us. More yeah, people. go for it. Oh, crap. There's a new episode tonight. Totally forgot. Thanks for oh. saying that. <laughs> Disney Plus. Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> But yeah, no, Fink, thank you so much for coming on tonight, man. Yeah, let us know whenever you guys want us on. We're more than willing to come on and, you know, talk about how great your Dallas Stars are because our, because <laughs> probably our team's just decided to be like, eh, you know, let's just take a break for the last two months of the season and just let Dallas back in it. So, yeah, yeah. for sure. We'll be but, happy yeah, to talk awesome. about being the best team that didn't make it out of our three teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot, Florida, for yeah. figuring out how to play hockey one season. Yeah, ruining it for everyone else. Exactly. I think what'll make that even better is if they're back in like seventh or eighth place next year. That would be so funny. That yeah, would that, make that, no sense to me. And they yeah, still can't sell more than five thousand tickets. Yeah. And the bad thing too is the fact that we'll be back in the Eastern Conference. So we so basically me and Fink don't have to worry about ever playing a Florida team ever again until oh, the God. Cup, cup final because I am so sick of Florida teams. Absolutely. Like, Couldn't agree get, more. Get away get away. I'm from not me. over Florida teams. I'm over the Panthers because you know, the Blue Jackets literally could sit there and show up like a kindergarten team against Detroit, but then God forbid we play Tampa and play like a Stanley Cup team out of absolutely nowhere. <laughs> the, oh, yeah. the, the thing the thing I'm worried about is the fact that we get Colorado back and I'm not ready for that. Enjoy. Oh, I'm yeah. not I'm not looking forward to playing against Colorado. Enjoy again. the next fifteen years of Nathan mm. McKinnon and Miko Rantan. At least NBC won't be talking about him. Thank God. Oh, yes. Now we yeah. get to listen to Booger McFarlane talk about it. Honestly, oh, yeah. that sounds like a delight. TV. <laughs> well, no, hey, we also got TNT and TBS doing the other half of the thing. Yeah, Charles Barkley. Too. Oof. Stephen A. Smith, Charles Barkley, and everyone else. This is going to be a fun time for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hockey's back, baby. <laughs> oh, you mean where our sports center will play hockey for like 10 seconds and bring Bar- Barry Melrose, the only guy to talk to about hockey. Yeah. And we'll have like a 10 minute, we'll have like a two minute segment. We'll have like LeBron James or anyone in the NBA for like 20 minutes just dribbling a basketball at practice. They're exactly. going to have a, they're going to have a 15 minute news story because LeBron James somebody caught him on uh, camera blowing his nose and throwing the tissue away the other day so you got to have a 15 minute story about that but meanwhile the Tampa Bay Lightning just won the Stanley Cup so all right back over to you let's talk some baseball. <laughs> <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> But yeah, man, again, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, it's been fun. We're going to have to talk to you some more. Have you get it's all on it again at some point. Uh, we'll hop on with you guys at some point and, you know, talk about your stars. Um, Zach, why don't you let everybody know where they can find us on Twitter? Yeah, Twitter, Ken Hawks Pod. You can find us on there. You can find us on all our social medias at Ken's and Tom Hawks Podcast. Pretty simple. Uh, we have a link tree. Go click that. You can find you can click that and find us on all you know podcasting platforms wherever you do listen to them and also check out our sponsors of pure optic yep no pure hockey spy optic and you can also check out romeo's pizza of columbus as well if you want to get some pizza and breadsticks while you're at it while you're watching hockey because why not fuel your body while you're watching guys fuel plex in those nets oh and out where can what are we all about here at the cans tom hawks podcast we are all about beer food, and hockey. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Cannons and Tomahawks podcast presented by Belly Up Sports. Beer, food, and hockey.